namaste and welcome back thanks for coming i hope you're doing well so today we're going to continue talking about javascript and we're going to be talking about um, javascript in the browser hence why i call this two flavors of javascript because so far you've been you've seen javascript online but that is not the home of javascript it's another home for javascript today but that wasn't the original home of javascript javascript was created and um, for your web browser to help you do certain things in your web browser, like make your page dynamic. So as you may have realized by now, there are three tech core technologies for web um, programming. And I think of it a three-legged stool. And basically, today's modern web development doesn't make sense without all three of them. So the first one would be HTML. And that is what really sparked the, you know, the web and the language that was created for the web. But pages back then were static. They did not change. And by change, I mean that they didn't change dynamically. Let's say, for example, you created a form and you entered something incorrectly. There was no way to validate that information. Let's say the, that form expected a phone number. There was no way to validate that information and show you without first submitting it to the back end and having some code run and check it and then submit another page that said it who can see now today, and you're going to see an example at the end, of what you can use JavaScript to do some really cool thing, make truly dynamic pages. And the trip of sitting and getting back on that page. Uh, the other part of it was um, cascading style sheet um, to, for styling your page. So a language is written out not only the, what you present, you're showing, but how it should be presented. And so that language uh, was developed, certainly. And then the other thing is JavaScript. And this is the... Um, programming aspect of it where to make your page dynamic and you can use JavaScript to manipulate both HTML and CSS as you'll see eventually and the advantage of that now is that since you can create HTML and CSS on the fly with code that's what you make your page dynamic right so if you wanted that button well use some JavaScript to put a button there or remove it. And so uh, it'd be the same as if like, you know, say you had a page with no button or you had a page with a button, but now you don't have to submit um, to the server and say, hey, give me a page with a button. And then when I want to hide a button, give me the same page without the button. You can also do the same code. That seems far-fetched and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but trust me. Okay, so let's start off with a hello world for a web browser. We saw hello world for the command line using um, Node.js um, application. But let's talk about that. what would the hello world for in JavaScript look like for your web browser. Okay, remember, JavaScript was created for your web browser. So if we can write JavaScript on the command line, why not, you know, we're talking about web programming. You're probably saying, well, why does Guidance install Node.js and doing that example when we're really supposed to be doing web development? I'll get back to that another day. Trust me, uh, we're gonna use Node.js. But for now, let's just swing back here and look at the JavaScript in its native environment, or it was originally born anyway. And so here's an hello world, a simple HTML page, and there shouldn't be anything um, strange here. Let me jump into um, brackets, and let's look at the code there. Okay, so we're in brackets now, and we're looking at the code. Uh, it looks slightly different than what I showed in the in the slide, but you know the only difference here is that I've actually put in a title, and now I put in these two lines to show you that oh, this page actually is a valid page. So let's just kind of bring it up here, and I'm gonna click my live preview, and so there's the page, right? And um, just to show you that you know that is the page. Yes, so there it is, and so let me refresh. So here is this piece of code and just ignore for a minute um, you know I have to be able to separate HTML from JavaScript so the way we do that by default the web browser anything in HTML this HTML file is going to be considered HTML so to kind of put the browser like give the, the browser a hint that actually I want to write JavaScript code I have to surround my JavaScript in this tag called a script tag okay and this is no different than when we wanted to write CSS and embed CSS in our HTML page we surrounded it in a style tab um, element, right? So same thing, style tab. So I, I'm doing a call note here that this is JavaScript, and I say console.log, hello world, and blah, blah, blah. And this is the exact same code that you see us copy just these two lines, add it in a JavaScript.js uh, file in the previous sections, right? And 
you know, we were able to run it. So nothing very different here. But where's the output? That, where, where's that show, console log? Where's that being written? What is the console? And I want you to, to do color log method. Where's that showing up? And it's not showing up here, obviously. Um, I've been refreshing the page and you're not seeing anything. All right. So I'll show you later on where that's showing up, where that goes. But for now, let's change this to alert. And I'm just going to change console log to alert. I'm going to save it. And notice as soon as I save it, it says uh, hello world. So it certainly know how to do alert. And I should expect uh, the next um, thing. So 3 plus 5. Oh, well, for, uh, the alert message um, command doesn't really take two parameters like that. So it just takes a string that it should show. And uh, there we go. Right. And you notice something else. Um, since it's a string, it, this is a string and it add this tree as a string and then it add this as a string, right? So I don't want it to treat these as a string. I want it to treat this as numbers. So, um, and that's only because, and we can learn about this later on. And so now I get what I want. So I say, okay, what I want you really to do is take these number at them and then the result of that add it to the, to the string. We didn't cover data types yet, so this might not make any sense. Um, but think of a string as just like you have a string of pearls, right? What do, what, do, what do you have on a chain? You have little pieces of things strung together or tied together. And here we have characters tied together. And so everything that you can type on your keyboard is considered a character. And some of the things you're going to type on your keyboard, like a shift key, does that doesn't actually show up. So if I keep pressing the shift key here, it doesn't actually enter anything into my um, text editor here. So we call it a non printable key. But there are a few others, right? Um, like the return key and so on to go to a new line. But so this is a string of characters. And we, when we say string, we really mean a string of characters. And so or a collection of characters. And so that's what we have here a string. And we delimit a string usually with uh, open double quotes or something um, single quotes as I showed before. So anyway, so that's fine. So now we know that how this is working. So the alert seems to work, but console didn't work. So let me get back and talk a little bit about um, where you actually see the um, the console output. So again, Java is designed for the web, and so your web browser. Um, has in it a Java engine. Let's just call it a Java engine, you know, a component of the browser that executes Java code. And so the way you get to it, and the, the, the thing that's going to be a problem is let me copy, uh, let's, let's do this. Uh, so this is what, okay, let me copy this and see if it will work in another browser. Um, because um, let me do this, bring another browser over here. I'm gonna bring my Firefox browser here. I'm gonna paste this and see if it, okay. So that, that doesn't work. All right, um, that doesn't wanna work. So, uh, all right, that's not, it doesn't matter if that doesn't work anyway, but what you want to do is you want to say view. If you have, if you're using Chrome, notice I'm using the Chrome browser. You want to say view developer and JavaScript console. And now when I look at a JavaScript console, notice my live preview goes away, but that's okay. Um, the way this live preview works in Brackets, it doesn't, if you bring up this Java console, it disconnects, or you bring up the developer tool, it disconnects. But that's fine. So I can type here console. And you could see I have the variable there, that log. And I could type my hello world here. And I get hello world, right? And you, could, and you can see I can type three plus five and I can get eight. So this, this is the JavaScript console. So it's a way. So when I write code with, and I say in my um, JavaScript code, console.log, it actually comes on this console, which is mostly hidden, but you're not going to see it right now. 
So let's see if I can open this file and actually get access to that JavaScript console. So uh, YouTube, da da da, and the source, and we're in chapter five, section five. And let me see if I open it this way. Um, it says hello world, oh, blah, blah. oh, I didn't use um, console at log. So okay, let's do console at log, save it, and let me refresh it this time. And when I refresh my page, notice it showed up there. Okay, so when you use console allow a JavaScript code in HTML, it goes to this console output that is hidden usually, and you have to bring it up. We can do it with the live preview, but it is there. Okay, and I can also type it in Java console, whatever. All right, now let me. I showed you in Chrome, and these are the instructions of how you do it in the other browser like Firefox, Safari, and Internet Explorer. So I promise that I'll show you some example of use or you can make your page dynamic using JavaScript. So that's what it's going to do here with a simple calculator that supports the four basic functions, you know, multiply. And so here's the simple calculator and just has two input. I'm using the Angular Material UI. Don't worry about this. This covers a lot of things that we haven't seen before. This is just an example. It's in the bonus section. So it's not, the code is not actually in this chapter five, but I wanted to show you. And so here's a basic calculator. And I could select the operation and so on. Then I enhance the calculator a little bit by maintaining history. So every time I do a calculation and press the equal button, it would add it to a list and I'll display the previous calculation with some styling and the option to delete a uh, previous operation if you know the list is getting too long or for whatever reason. One thing I want to show you is this, let's just abstract the browser for a second and say that there is this JavaScript, the part response for JavaScript and some other components in there. And there's also, um, you know, parts to render in HTML and I'll pull out the JavaScript part of it. And you can wrap another application around it, not a web browser, but a command line application. Then what you would have is Node.js, and that's exactly what happened. The JavaScript part of the Chrome browser is written in C++, and somebody pulled it out and said, oh, we don't want it in a browser, put an application around it with some other things, and made it a console application. And that's why you have JavaScript both in the browser where it was born and now on the command line on your desktop. And so hopefully, I don't know if you were thinking about it or not, but I kind of wanted to just kind of explain why there's, you can write JavaScript in both places. All right. And so we'll see later on how you can use the JavaScript even in the command line on your desktop. Even though you don't have a browser, you don't have the idea of a window, you can still do interesting things there also. Um, so thank you. And I know this is a bit long, um, going on to 13 and a half minutes here. So let me end it here and say... Goodbye and see you later and I hope you learned something. Take care.